Hi and welcome. In today's video, we will talk about Dell Container Storage Module for our application. This is the knowledge transfer for the first version, the first release of the Dell CSM application module. But before we begin, let's briefly discuss and introduce Dell Container Storage Module or CSM. CSMs are a set of components that aim to ease the storage management from Kubernetes. Most of these modules aim to bring Dell Storage Enterprise feature available directly from Kubernetes di directives. So these modules are built on top of the CSI specification to complement the CSI specification. And in the case of the replication module, uh, we are going to make the lifecycle management of a replicated volume as easy as it can be. Note that these modules train to leverage the array capabilities, and in this case, therefore, we are not implementing replication from Cube Cluster, but again, leveraging the replication feature from our Dell storage. So every Dell storage array supports uh, replications. It can be asynchronous, or it can be uh, it can be asynchronous with a recovery point objective. It can be synchronous, or it can have active active, depending on the technology. And each of these replication types serve different purposes and can be related to either your data data center constraint or your use cases. If we talk about the architecture of the Dell CSM replication module. Uh, again, the idea here is to manage the life cycle of persistent volume directly from Cube. So it supports all three replication types, synchronous, asynchronous, active, active with Metro, assuming that, again, the storage array underlying supports it. The architecture of the module is uh, composed of three main components, the replication controllers, that can be deployed in a stretch cluster or within different clusters. This module, it's actually uh, composed of a controller component, a pod, and some custom resource definition that will abstract the concept of replication within Kubernetes. The second piece of the puzzle is the sidecar. So the sidecars that we will add to uh, existing CSI driver will interpret the requests from the replication controller as actual actions on the array side. So let's say we provision a volume with a, 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 an asynchronous replica in power store. We'll create an object within the replication controller that will translate into calls against the power store. And last but not least, we have the RepCTL utility. So the RepCTL utility is there to help and ease the management of objects across different clusters. So diving a bit more on this RepCTL. So RepCTL is literally a binary, and this is sugar on top of Kubernetes resources operation. This means that everything we will do and present with the RepCTL you can do with Vanilla kubectl operation. It's just there that with RepCTL, we can talk to multiple clusters at once and it will simplify lots of things. So that's very good sugar. Uh, like I said, you can talk and deploy thanks to RepCTL on multiple clusters at once. Uh, it will help to interconnect all different clusters so we are able to talk to each other. So in case of um, different clusters, we need the replication controller to forward some of the events to the distant clusters, like PV creation. And thanks to RepCTL, the deployment of icons to talk to these cluster will be, will be uh, much easier. Uh, it also helps with storage class creation. So let's say you have two distant clusters that are connected to two different arrays. You know, one configuration from site B, site A, sorry, uh, and the configuration of the storage class on site B will be simple permutation of IDs, but with RepCTL will make that much easier to use. It allows to kick off the usual commands that may be useful when you have a disaster recovery uh, or uh, uh, 
when you have a disaster recovery. That is to say, usual workflow will consist of, A, I have, I have an event happening on my site A, I need to fail over, or then once my site A came back to life, I need to reprotect it, or maybe I will have to swipe identities or do failbacks, et cetera, et cetera. So all these actions are, are consistent of replication concept within the storage. Uh, it will be brought to you in an easy manner thanks to the RepCTR. We can see the statuses of the different replication state. Is it in sync? Is it failed over? Is it recovering, etc.? And you can do much more. So now that we know a bit more about the components, uh, let's talk about the use cases. So we see two big use cases that we can implement with uh, the replication module, the CSM replication module. The first one has to do with disaster recovery. So most companies have a disaster recovery plan in case of impromptu events happened, uh, fire in the data center, a power outage, um, just to make sure that we can switch from site A to site B, etc., etc. So for the disaster recovery use cases, we will provision volume from one cluster and then make them available on the other side, either synchronously or asynchronously. So in case of asynchronous replication, there will be a recovery point objective with uh, basically a, a cron job <laughs> on how often we will replicate the data. Our module, like I said, support different type of cube in infrastructure, cube architecture, that is to say we can have one big cluster with nodes uh, stretched across site A and site B, or we can have independent architecture. And this is made available to customer because they have different uh, disaster recovery plan. The usual sequence is to provision a volume from one site and leave the CSM replication module, take care of implementing all the mechanics in the back end so this second volume, so a second volume will be available on the other side. Uh, then in case we want to switch from one side to another or there is an unplanned event, we will fail over. That is to say, we'll inform Kubernetes, hey, it's time that our application moves from site A to site B. Once we are back in a situation where the application is made ready and available on site B, we will reprotect. That is to say, we'll inform the backends that a hey, now site B is the source and you need to reprotect and re uh, resync your data, and then we can fail over again. Um, so in the next diagrams, I'm gonna show you what are the operations, uh, the sequence that I just mentioned. Uh, again, here normal operation. I will use the Dell CSI replicator module to provision the volume and make it available to my workload the volume on site A will be writable, the replication link will be put in place, and the volume on site B will be read-only. In case something happens, we need to fail over, plan or unplanned, this volume from site A will be made read-only, and the volume on site B will be made available to the cluster on site B. It's up to the Cube Administrator to restart the stateful app from site B and make them available. Once a situation got back to normal, site A is now up again, we will reprotect the data and make sure that every new data that has been written from site A, it's from site B, goes to site A. So all these actions, like I said, can be triggered through the RepCTL utility in a very simple or automate and automated manner for the Kubernetes administrator. You don't need to go into UIs or deep dive into uh, the, the different Dell technologies to know what's going on. You just kick off failover, reprotect, failover again, and you'll be good to go. The second use case we can achieve with the help of the replication is the high availability use case. So in that case, when Dell Storage supports active-active replication, 
Um, there is pretty much nothing to do here. Uh, the, the user will provision his app and associated volumes. And the replication module will take care of putting in place all the necessary bytes, uh, that's to say, uh, create the different volume and volume group, put the replication link in place. And then once the application starts on one node, and it starts to write I.O. to have active I.O., it will be synchronized across the different clusters. In case an outage happens, uh, path goes down, site goes down, it's pretty much transparent for the user and for the workload. Uh, everything will still be active-active and will still be written on the, diff on the targeted sites. So how to begin with the CSM replication? First, you should start from the doc website. The doc website is a gold mine full of details on the architecture, on the different status that are available and given by the CRDs, on the different operation you can run, on the different use case, etc. etc. So the documentation website is the go-to place first. Then you can start by downloading RepCTL and do some kind of implementation. Incoming also are practical videos and demos, how to install the, the components, uh, how to use asynchronous replication, synchronous replication, or HA with different type of applications. And this will be available on the, on the knowledge transfer website. Last but not least, I wanted to touch base a bit on how to troubleshoot. So again, since everything is uh, Kubernetes ready, Kubernetes object, uh, you can use the Kubernetes kubectl commands to get status on the replication group. You can use the repctl command to get more details. And you can use the same tools as we are using every day to debug our CSI driver, that is to say kubectl logs, going to the array, etc. Et Thanks for your attention and see you in a bit for the practical demos.